In this video, we are going to learn how to prepare a solution of known concentration from a solid solute. Let's say that we need 200 milliliters of a stock solution that is about 20 grams of solute per liter. The first thing we need to do is pick the right equipment for the job. When preparing a stock solution, our goal is to know the precise concentration of the solution. So we'll use a good balance, meaning an analytical balance, to measure the mass of the solute precisely. But what is the best way to precisely measure the volume of the solution? We have the following options at hand in the lab. Which of these pieces of glassware will give us the most precise volume of solution? The best choice of glassware is the volumetric flask. Unlike beakers and Erlenmeyer flasks, which have large necks and are not well calibrated, the narrow neck of the volumetric flask allows us to make very precise solutions. Any given volumetric flask is only calibrated to a single volume, marked by a single calibration line on the neck of the flask. Therefore, any time a solution needs to be prepared with an accurate volume, it should always be made in a volumetric flask. In our lab, we have several volumes of flasks available. Which of these would be the best choice for making our solution, given that we need 200 milliliters of a 20 grams per liter solution? Whenever we're making solutions, we never want to make it more than once if possible. So the 100 milliliter flask is not ideal. But we also love our planet and don't want to make any extra waste. So the 250 milliliter flask is our best choice. It will make more than what we need, but with the least amount of extra waste. Now that we know that we will prepare 250 milliliters of 20 grams per liter solution, we can calculate that this means five grams of solid solute in our 250 milliliter volumetric flask. As we mentioned earlier, to measure the precise mass of the solute, we will use an analytical balance. It is also important to keep in mind that it is okay to not have exactly 5 grams. Your time is more important than making a solution that is exactly 20 grams per liter. We just need to reach a concentration that is close enough to the target and know what that precise concentration is. We measured 4.9427 grams of solute. So the precise concentration of the final solution will be 19.77 grams per liter. Make sure to record the precise mass of the solute you measured in your notebook. Before adding the solute to the flask, we need to rinse the flask with the solvent to ensure it's clean. Why is it important to rinse glassware before we use it in the lab? Remember, the first rinse with a small amount of solvent must be treated as waste and be disposed into the waste beaker, but the second rinse can go down the sink. Given the narrow neck of the volumetric flask, transferring the solid solute directly into it can be tricky. It's easier to pre-dissolve the solid solute in a small amount of solvent in a beaker first, then transfer the solution into the flask using a funnel. Do not use too much solvent in this step, otherwise you will exceed the total target volume of your solution. When transferring the solution into the volumetric flask, it is a good idea to hold the flask in one hand to avoid it from tipping over. Now, while most of the solute has been transferred into the flask, a very small amount is left behind in the beaker and funnel. So we must rinse the beaker several times with small amounts of solvent and add the rinse to the flask through the funnel. Ensure that you are rinsing only with small amounts of solvent and repeat two to three times. What is the purpose of rinsing the beaker and funnel at this step? We're rinsing the beaker and funnel to make sure all of the solute is transferred and none of it is left behind. It is not enough to measure the mass precisely. We need to make sure that all of the solute gets into the flask. Why are we making our rinse volumes small? Remember, we need to keep these volumes small so that we don't go over the calibrated fill line on the flask. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now with all the solute in the flask, we can pour more solvent into the flask directly. Pour slowly and pay close attention to the liquid level so that we do not go over the calibration mark. Stop pouring when the flask is about 80% full. To fill up the rest of the volume, we will switch to a plastic pipette and add water into the flask dropwise until the bottom of the meniscus of the liquid reaches the calibration mark. Similar to reading a graduated cylinder, the flask should be placed on the leveled bench and the meniscus should be read at eye level. Why did we switch to using a pipette to complete filling the flask? One of the most common mistakes when using a volumetric flask is overfilling the flask above the calibration mark. If we do that, then we've made a big mistake. So it is very important to slow down the addition of the solvent by switching to a pipette as we approach the end. What should we do if we accidentally fill the solvent above the calibration mark? Pipetting out the extra solvent from the flask will result in loss of solute, making the concentration inaccurate. Keep in mind that our goal is to prepare a solution with an accurate concentration. So, if extra solvent is added above the calibration mark, then unfortunately we will have to restart the entire process. This can be very frustrating and time consuming, so it's important to slow down at that step and make sure you're doing a good job filling the flask. Now that we have the correct amount of solute and solvent in the flask, we can go ahead and mix the solution to make it uniform. To do so, cap the flask securely with the stopper. Mix the solution thoroughly by inverting it 10 to 12 times. Make sure your index finger is holding the cap in place during this process. At this point, we have finished preparing the solution. If the solution will not be used immediately, we usually transfer it to a storage bottle to free up the flask for other use. Don't forget to rinse the storage bottle with a small volume of the solution before transferring. And whether you transfer the solution to a storage bottle or not, always clearly label the concentration of the solution on the bottle or flask. 